Right guys, in this video we're going to look at some OPC communication between two separate softwares and really what I'm looking at here is I've got Fluid Sim opened, I've got an electro pneumatic circuit built um, and I've got a controller in the center, so PLC. And what I'm hoping to do is I'm hoping to design um, my ladder logic in a different software package, so my PLC software package, uh, and then ultimately download that into the fluid sim so that the fluid sim will work so i don't need to do any coding in fluid sim so my coding's done here this software package will talk to fluid sim and i can just simulate it everything so there's no hardware involved here it'll just simulate it through this opc um package okay so it's open communication protocols um package now there's a couple of things that need to download for this okay so we need an OPC server um, and we need our simulation simulator controller or control win system tray okay that allows us to log into a kind of simulated or um, yeah a simulated virtual PLC okay now I'm not saying I'm completely up to speed and everything OPC with this um, this has taken me a while to figure out. I've been watching a lot of videos on YouTube how to get this all connected up and how, for, how to get it pretty much working. Um, it's not a seamless sort of scenario. The main problem is some of these vendors of their software will update their software package but not update their maybe OPC connections and that's been really a problem with it. But anyway, I'll go through the steps. So the first thing we need to download is, as I said, the OPC server from Codasys. So you can download it here um, and that will give you the server application. So you'll see if I open this up, OPC configure, this is our server communicator. Okay. Um, so this is pretty much like a translator. It takes in stuff from Codasys and then it can uh, communicate with another OPC server on the, the kind of client software with the Festo software. So you need this now. The other thing is you need the the license, okay? Um, because unless you're running, if you're running Codasys version three, um, you'll need the license. If you're on old, older Codasys, you'll get away with it. But that's what I'm saying with the versions. Um, now I haven't paid for it. I've just used the demo uh, to test that it works and it does work. So you know, again, if anyone knows any ways around this, uh, do let me know, and we'll see. So I just downloaded the, the demo license. Now you also have to activate the license so when you download it you'll get given a license ticket number and you've got to go into um, licenses from Codasys and you have to activate the license as well so just make sure you do that um, so that it activates it. So you need that the OPC server from, from Codasys and then also what you need is if you haven't got this already when you downloaded um, Codasys you also need the system tray so down here below you need the virtual um, system tray for a 64 bit. That's the one I did um, to run again. There's licenses here that you have to pay for. I didn't bother, just download the standard. You get the 32 bit and the 64 bit, um, and you can run that. Okay. So um, we'll start with Codices first. Okay. And you'll, you'll see very basically, I've just done two lines of code. Okay. I have two inputs and two outputs. Trigger input turns on the on the, on the output uh, for as long as the input's on. Okay, so very basic ladder logic. Now the way we phrase this, um, I'm sticking with Codasys. If you actually pay for the license, you know, when you go to the upgraded license here, you don't actually have to use the old school labeling. Um, but I'm going to stick with it because I use it if I'm doing it from the Siemens um, and other vendors as well. And you can check out those other videos if you want. But um, I'm going to stick with this E for inputs and A for outputs. It's just kind of a previous um, name and tradition with with uh, Festo and their OPC servers. So I have to single that as a byte because I'm going to store my eight bits. Um, so my eight kind of inputs are stored within this byte. Okay, it just groups them together nicely. And the reason for that is when you look on your codices, you'll see your input and outputs to only have eight bits and bytes. So if you want to do more, obviously you can bring in more of these but you can only do eight bits at a time and um, so that's why they're there so once you set up those put in your code 
Um, you got to make sure that you have a consistent system or symbol configuration added in. So how you do that is right click on application, add object, and you'll see boom boom boom. Where is it? Maybe because I've added it in, it's not here, um, but you would be able to add that in. Let me just pause this for a second. Yep, so um, all you got to do is add it in from the application, add object, symbol configuration, um, tick the boxes, make sure you tick OPC UA um, features, and add that in. Okay. And what this does, if you perform a basically tick what you want to bring across on the OPC, um, so we'll do a build first. You'll see I'll be able to tick those, and that's what will be transferred across those two byte information from from the PLC program. So we got to make sure that symbol configuration is is in. You got to set these up um, with your code, set up your bytes, and then the last thing is your device configuration. So make sure when you're in your device that you have it as a simulated PLC or a virtual PLC. So if we right click on that and again go update device. So you're not using a physical PLC, we're using one of these um, simulated PLCs. So I'm using just a 64-bit and that must match up with whatever system tray you're using. So I'm using a 64-bit system tray, must use a 64-bit um, control win version tree um, PLC. Okay, so so keep that in mind. So when you do that, um, make sure that the system tray is running. So make sure you've started PLC. Then ultimately, when you do a scan, you should see um, your PLC pop up, your virtual PLC. Now, what you're going to want to do is you're want to going to want to name it. Okay, so call it my PLC or something like that. Um, let's see, change device name. Yeah, so you should be able to add that in. So make sure you call that because you'll need to use that name again later and um, then just make sure you're able to log in click ok and make sure you're able to get communication with the virtual plc and put it into run mode okay so you should have this nicely configured there all right then the next thing you got to do is you got to go into your opc a configured so search for that opc configurator and you gotta set this up. So this is kind of like the translator. It's taking the bits from uh, from Codasys. It's gonna uh, transfer the information that we want to the other OPC um, kind of client on the other software. So basically, you're adding in pending the PLC. I'll give you a PLC here. I've set my update rate to ten milliseconds. Um, tick these boxes. You can call it so you can rename the PLC. Um, so call it my PLC, make sure it's on gateway 3, um, and then in the connection, again, if you go into edit here, you got to make sure this is called my PLC as well and have these settings. Okay. So then once that's done, make sure you click save, and that will save your OPC connection. So that's everything there. Then what you got to do is go into Festo, uh, into Fluid Sim, so draw your diagram, what you're looking to do. Um, it's a little bit confusing because what you got to do is you got to have your inputs going into the out and then your outputs going into the in module because uh, basically these are you know the outputs triggered from another another software and then going into your fluid sim uh, so it's a wee bit back to front um, but listen that's the way it is so just be careful with that so you have these kind of input push buttons going into the output module there. So once you pull this together, so you know, you get, to draw your diagram, you get these um, fluid sim uh, modules, digital modules down here. See that easy port OPC modules, you can just drag them in. As I said, if you need more, you can just drag in some more of them if you have more than eight inputs and eight outputs. Um, so then what I do here is go to options Go to easy port OPC uh, communication and we're going into OPC mode. And then what you want to do is double click on this. So you are using the Codices OPC configurator. So that DA, 
Um, 